Okay, this is our first question of the night about saying yes with a, with a reference to Jim Carrey's Yes Man movie, trying to say yes to break out of the habit of saying no to everything and then at the end of the movie there's actually, he has to learn discernment because his girlfriend senses he's inauthentic and he's going to lose his girlfriend unless he <laughs> learns some quick discernment, which is really a, a speed up thing. But So yeah, yeah, you could say that, um, you know, like the Bible says, let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. It takes a lot of discernment and mind training to come to the point where you can authentically let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because there's so much conditioning in there, there's so much people pleasing, there's so much resistance. And then when you start to open up to the context that there's a, a, a spirit within you, a guide like the Holy Spirit that, that knows what is best for you, that knows your best interest in every seeming situation and, and can give you the yays and the nays. And you have to learn to receive and to be spoken through. Uh, that's, that's the goal of all spiritual awakening is to achieve that and to experience that. But on the way, for most people, the frustration is, is they don't hear the Holy Spirit's voice gui and guidance directly. So they're left with this you know, dilemma of their yeses and their noes. And they know that they want to be intuitively harmonious so that they don't have to regret their yeses and noes and keep changing their mind incessantly because they don't have any clarity. And um, what Jesus says in the Course is that you would be unwise uh, to not follow a teacher who in every circumstance knows you're good. And therefore, you know, we're opening up and I think the general theme of that whole movie was starting to break out of resistances and fears and doubts and open up and to start saying yes, that's actually how it starts for Jim Carrey in that movie. He's amazed at the miracles that happen when he just begins to start to say yes. So, we tend to use with with our spirituality and our community, we kind of use the elder brother approach. Even in the Course, Jesus is described as an elder brother, perfectly equal to you in every way, and one who can save a lot of time by the wisdom and the guidance. And so that's what we're all about, is collapsing time and saving time, bring the Alpha and the Omega together to, to a unified experience and so we kind of advocate more of an elder brother approach in the sense that um, just like in this world if you if you had a, an AA sponsor who had been we'll say sober for 35 years who was humorous and seemed very clear and wise and seem to offer really wise things to a lot of the people, there would be a sense of respect for that elder brother who had done the program, worked the program, and seemed to be excelling in all aspects of living. And, you know, if there are those that have done a lot of work and are consistently peaceful and everything, even in this world, that's a good thing to follow. Uh, not necessarily that those teachers would tell you everything that you should and shouldn't do or would direct you specifically, but um, certainly would be an inspiration and certainly be, could be someone that you could join with and link with. And so the, the main problem, I, I, I said if, if the ego had, had a middle name, it would be autonomy. And that's the whole thing that set this world up is autonomy. That's what the authority problem is about, the belief that you can author yourself as a personality. And so it's going to take a lot of surrender and letting go of those autonomous decisions and to come into alignment of Holy Spirit, decide for God for me. Or today I will make no decisions by myself. That's a, a very humble mind that, that can actually say and mean today I will make no decisions by myself. 
So as you're going through it, um, if you can just be aware of the of the resistances, if you feel closed down and shut down a lot of times, like like our character in Yes Man, you know, Jim Carrey, he was very, very closed down and very fearful and, and paranoid. And still there was a, almost like an arrogance and a cockiness and a pride. I know there have been spiritualities that have just, um, just like the drug slogan is just say no, there are some spiritualities that just say yes. And that blind yes to everything is not going to get you very far either because it's just like a reaction. It's not, there's, there's no discernment at all with it. So we tend to use the sense of we have so open discussions and a lot of prayer and then joining together and uh, just like our discussion today when you came in right over there and we had our discussion and when we give it over to spirit it's like like joy and laughter usually are the the outcome uh, that comes from being so surrendered and letting the spirit just flow through so freely where everybody can expose and express and and then the, the clarity just kind of emerges so yeah I certainly wouldn't advocate saying yes when you come to a spiritual community that's a very deep and very devoted and very reverent and they have things in place like we do in terms of um, tasks and projects and all kinds of backdrops just designed to learn to listen to the spirit within and to let it, it do it through you so to speak that's the goal not you know not to try to have a, a doer mentality or a doer concept but to be done through so completely that your mind becomes aligned with with that which is a state of beingness and, and doesn't have a, a do or a don't do in it it's just pure beingness and pure spirit that's always the goal with everything we do and um, oftentimes people come and encounter all kinds of resistances that come up and um, in many, many cases, if there's a sense of great, great wisdom behind everything that's being done, and you can surrender into that uh, and trust that there is a purpose behind things, and that you don't have to try to use your past learning, you know, the pros and the cons and the analysis to try to find that, because you won't find it through that. You will find it through listen, follow, listen, follow. And if you can't hear, and so the listen, follow doesn't work, then, then trust and follow, trust and follow. But I would also be discerning in, in terms of who you're, who you're following. And Jesus had a great line in the Bible, you shall know them by their fruits. You know, that's, the, that's a great discernment line if I've ever heard one. You know, really, in the most basic, simple, straightforward way, you know, that you want to to trust what is trustworthy and you shall know them by their fruits is, is a real practical way of doing that. So, so I feel like in this world we have mentors and we have, um, you know, those that, that seem to have gone before and seem to have worked this just like we have apprentices working with craftsmen it's the same thing spiritually, you know, that that same thing works. If you want to learn a craft, you would learn from a master craftsman. If you, if you want to learn and experience peace of mind, then you turn to those that are peaceful to experience that. And that doesn't necessarily mean successful as the world judges it, because uh, it can be a, an inverse thing there. Because Jesus says you can't judge your advances from your retreats. But you can begin to discern more of a sense of a lightheartedness and a peace. And that's something that you want to learn to trust more and move towards and follow, even if uh, you aren't hearing or feeling something yourself. You know, it can be that you'll per break through resistances by, by trusting and following. And that's really something that, that is 
very important. We teach is very important. It works very, very well. So it's worked well for us. I happen to have an unusual spiritual journey in the sense that I started hearing the Holy Spirit very clearly, you know, back in the late 1980s. And, and I would say my teachers and mentors, most of them would be considered dead by the world. Uh, but they were through books, books and movies, mostly books, where I felt this huge heart opening and resonance, almost like I was connecting with them. It didn't matter how many years or decades or centuries that they passed away. I really felt like this deep connection with them, like they were right there with me in, in presence, right there with me in my heart. And so, consequently, my journey was, was unlike many people's journey because I didn't really have like physical teachers or in the case of like Gary Renard uh, materializing <laughs> teachers either. Um, but for many people that's the case. They do have materializing teachers or ma what seems to be material teachers and again you're back to you shall know them by their fruits. You know that's that's the best way of discerning. So if you're working like in the community and somebody's stewarding a house or overseeing a task or a project or whatever and you know you're asked to do something that's that's very project related or task related or something in this kind of context uh, I would say the the advisable answer is yes and it has much wisdom behind it uh, and you get to watch your emotions whether you say yes or no, you really get to watch what, if you have any reactions or things that come up. It's good to pay close attention to those. Uh, whichever you say yes or no, it's good to pay very close attention to those. And in the end, it's, it's the way that you unwind from the ego because in the end the ego is, is a, a decision-making process that's based on a lie. And you want out of that lie. It's like a closed system too, so you know that's why it seems to take quite a bit of willingness to to come outside of that. It's kind of a circumventing lie that's all around. Uh, that, that's so all pervasive, as they say in the Matrix. Everything you see is is part of that lie, part of that control. So uh, it's. It's advisable to say yes in the, that kind of context and um, also pay close attention to your emotions. And then through saying yes and feeling the, the joy and the happiness and, and feeling that deep flow of spirit, that's the most important thing is starting to realize that it never really was saying yes to externals. It was really an internal process all along. It just looked like there was external characters involved. And the whole point of the process is to collapse that whole inner outer thing too. <laughs>